Brooke Hopper, thank you so much for joining us on Creative Pro Conversations. It is a joy to have you here. I am very excited to be here, David. Thanks for having me. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself and about how you got into this position. You're, you're principal design AI something. I, I can't quite get that title. It, you know what? It is a very long title. Um, I'm the principal designer for machine intelligence and new technology. Okay. That's a mouthful. We it actually is. say Mint for short, um, cool. which sounds kind of fresh and nice, which I really like. Um, but you know, I didn't just sort of fall here. I, I actually my background is in graphic design. I've actually spent most of my career as a graphic designer. Um, did some illustration, um, and then I landed at Adobe, which honestly has just been a dream. It's been great. I get to wake up and I get to work with some of the most talented people in the world every single day and make stuff for them. And honestly, I mean, you know, I, I like to say that like it's a it's a challenge, um, and it's it, like a, it's a total honor because you know the stuff that we create here at Adobe is the stuff that those people use to make their amazing work. And I just I couldn't be in a better place. I have to say, love that, love that. But so you've you've been a designer. And now you've you're in this role of designing with machine uh, machine intelligent intelligent AI <laughs> machine language no not machine language uh, machine intelligence machine machine intelligence yeah oh my gosh where's my head um, how, what does that mean that you're designing with these tools um, you know it it's really I would say that a lot of it. You sort of have to reframe how you're thinking about it, you know, in in standard sort of like, you know, UX design and product design, it's, it's still all about the experience. Um, but really what we're doing at a simple level is we're making, taking something that's very complex and very complicated and we're making it easier for, you know, anyone to use really is, is the goal behind quite honestly, everything we do at Adobe. In this case, it just happens to be a new technology and we're building new experiences and we're trying to make it you know, approachable and build it into our tools at the same time. Um, because we're really in this age where you know, some of these workflows are changing with, um, you know, with generative AI. I mean, ma machine intelligence AI has been around forever, quite honestly. We use it every single day. When you, you know, look at your phone to unlock it, that's using AI. Um, and so we use it every day without even realizing it. But um, I think that's sort of the, the, what we're trying to do here at Adobe is we're trying to very intentionally incorporate this as a tool into workflows that creatives um, are doing. And that's really where it makes sense um, to me as a, as, a, as a former graphic designer, as someone who would and still does, quite honestly, use these tools. Um, that's where it makes sense to me is directly in the workflow where I'm at. But here's the thing. There are a lot of creatives out there, as I'm sure you're aware, there's a lot of creatives who are saying Adobe is trying to do away with creatives. They're trying to get rid of all the humans, um, which I don't entirely understand. But I have to post this to you, this poses this question, how, what is that balance between what Adobe is trying to do of building these great tools and actually replacing the humans that are using them? Yeah. I mean, look, Adobe is a company full of creatives. <laughs> I mean, every, everyone here is a creative at heart. And so the, literally the last thing that we would want to do, um, first of all, both from a, you know, just from our you know, what we enjoy and what we enjoy doing is replace creatives. And also from a business perspective, we don't want to replace um, creatives because, you know, that's that's who we are at, at the heart of everything. Um, really, it's, you know, this this whole thing um, is about bringing tools. And I, I know I keep using the word tools, but I'm doing that intentionally um, because it is a tool to help you um, into the workflow. And at the at the end of the day, you know, humans are all about ideas, you know, a, a hmm. piece of software or, you know, an amazing, you know, from a photographer's perspective, the best lens in the world is nothing um, until it's in the hands of someone who really understands and knows how to use it. Hmm. And that's the way hmm. that I think about technology is like, sure, I can prompt all day, every day, but it's really the ideas and the execution at the end of the day that matters. Um, and that's, I think that's the important thing to remember is, you know, creatives are the ones who at the, at the hands of a creative or at the hands of an artist, anything becomes amazing. It has to be the artist 
that has the idea and has the execution, it has the intent, it has the point of view that decides to break it or, you know, break the rules. And I think that's the one thing that as humans, we do so well. And as Mm. creatives, we do so well as we decide to break rules and make it surprising and interesting. I Um, love that. A a little bit of a tangent, but no, um, no, no. That's those things that, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about. Um, I think about every single day. I love that. And just the idea, I mean, I, I appreciate that you're using the word tool because in my mind, this is a tool. And we've been using AI tools in Adobe software and other tools, other software um, for a long time. You know, we were using Sky Replacement just a few years ago in Photoshop. We've been using all kinds of tools you know, the, in InDesign, the ability to, uh, to do wrap around an object. All of those things were based on AI or as Adobe like to say, Sensei. It's all the sensei technology. <laughs> but uh, but now we've sort of moved to a whole new level where it's not just analyzing and acting, it's generating. You're generating. Mm-hmm. And it, it does seem like that transition has, uh, well, it triggers, it triggers people who are creatives. Totally. totally. And I get it. And, you know, new, new technology, especially this can be, you know, it can feel a little like you know, where, where is my place in this and and how is it going to impact me? But I think the thing that we also have to remember is computers were kind of the same way for the generation before us, you know, Mm. as artists. So, you know, when, I I mean, I'm, I'm totally revealing my age here, but like, I didn't even use a computer until two years into design school. We weren't allowed to use it because the, the, the focus was on the craft and the execution. And so I think that like, you know, as new technology comes along, this tends to be a recurring theme where, you know, it's this new thing that that makes its way into the artistic and the creative space. We don't really know what to do with it. But then ultimately, at the end of the day, it's artists who sort of take it and make it, you know, take it and use it for themselves and turn it into something that's useful. And at the end of the day, we have creatives, we always have, and I th- we will always need it. You know, the, the yeah. you know, to, to sort of like abstract it is like the machine needs creative humans in order to exist. Right, <laughs> so, right, right. You know, it, it, we, humans are at the core of everything. How, how do you respond to critics who are saying that if you create it with AI, with Gen AI specifically, it's it's lacking heart, it's lacking a soul because it it was generated by a, by software, by algorithms? Mm-hmm. I mean... Really what AI is, is it, it looks at patterns. It detects patterns, it detects commonalities. It, it sort of like takes rules, it finds the rules and it repeats the rules. Hmm. That's, what, that's what AI does really well. That's what it's meant to do. And sometimes, you know, it discovers rules that we as humans didn't realize exist and it, it sort of brings those rules to life and sort of bubbles them up. But as humans, you have a point of view you have a life experience that you've lived. And so that's what you bring. You bring the ideas, you bring the soul, you bring heart, um, you bring this sort of inspiration and point of view that the, quite honestly, the machine doesn't have. So the machine requires the human in order to connect to other humans to provide that soul. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's back to the sort of like, you know, an idea and a paintbrush are nothing, or I'm saying that wrong. Um, The paintbrush in the hand of, you know, someone with a bad idea is nothing but a Mm. paintbrush in the hand of someone who has an amazing idea. Like that's where it really shines. And I think that's why I've said it a few times, but I keep going back to it. And that's it's it's that pairing that's Mm. required in order to really have creative heart and soul. I love that. The the idea that you're pairing this, that that the artist, the creator, whoever that is, Mm -hmm. that the, the, the human with the tool and then in some ways, there's another pair, which is the receiver of that information, because you mm-hmm. need that person to interpret it, and it either works or it doesn't work. You know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like so much of design, people get caught up in, well, how was it made, instead of, well, did it work? Did we, yeah. were we able to communicate what we were trying to communicate from my head, from my heart, out into somebody else's head or heart? And totally, that seems to me more important than how I made it. I mean, I could use yep. a chisel, but... It, yeah. you know, whatever it is, if it did it work or didn't it work? Yeah. At the end of the day, honestly, the the creativity is all about human connection. Yeah. And that's yeah. really, yeah. I mean, that's really what it is. And without that sort of connection and without me being able to recognize a point of view, and that's not to say that, you know, any human creates something and it's going to automatically connect with something else. But 
creativity is about, you know, mm. that transference um, and that connection. I love that. I love that. So uh, again, back on a, a slightly, uh, on a topical theme, uh, people are concerned. Another area that people are concerned about is um, that a lot of the Gen AI stuff out there has been trained on people's work. I mean, in some ways you could say it's all been trained on people's work. Um, and sometimes it's it's ethical and sometimes it's not. I know that Adobe has spent a lot of time, like you said, Adobe is full of creatives who care deeply about other creatives. And I know that Adobe has tried really hard to, to train Firefly uh, technology in an ethical, legal way. Um, it does seem like there's been some lapses along the way. I don't know. I don't know the details of that, but I keep hearing about this. Like, well, yeah, but it wasn't 100 percent trained on that. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Is that a is that an issue? Yeah, I mean, Adobe Firefly is trained on Adobe Stock. We trained on licensed content that we have licensed, um, and and content that's um, part of the public domain. Mm. And so, you know, we recognize that people may use um, you know, gen fill, generative fill and Photoshop as part of their work. Um, but all of the content that is submitted through stock goes through a rigorous process. Um, and so, you know, we're not sourcing content from, you know, other generative AI providers. Mm -hmm. Um, but if someone chooses to use something like generative fill or text to vector as part of their submission to Adobe stock, it goes through that standard rigorous process to make sure that, you know, the, that, that person has the rights to that content, hmm. um, you know, and we, if they, if they don't, we address it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, it, it is, so, so you, you mentioned the generative, uh, fill in Photoshop. And I think that's one of the things that people have, has gotten kind of people freaked out about. Like if I have an image and I want to do generative expand or gen, you know, general brush, generative, uh, fill is, is Firefly uploading my content, my image, and then learning from it? No, no. Okay. Um, so, you know, Firefly, we do not, as when you're putting something in Adobe Cloud, that's not something that we trained on. We, the only way that we would train on your content is if you submitted it to Adobe Stock. Um, okay. That's how Firefly is trained currently. Um and, you know, we believe uh, our, our principles are look, transparency, responsibility, authenticity. Um, we believe it's very, very important to be transparent about how we do things. Hmm. Um, and we believe that, you know, if we're going to train on your content, you have consented to that. Right. And so you're uploading it to Adobe stock. Um, we, we compensate our stock contributors for the use of their content in Firefly. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah. That's great. Okay, that's that's great information, great confirmation, because I know a lot of people continue to be concerned about all of these issues uh, in using these tools. Um, so how are you using this? As a designer, how are you using these tools, that the, the new stuff we're seeing in, in Illustrator, in Photoshop, in design? How, how are you using it? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, like some of my favorite ways to use Firefly are with Gen Fill and Generative Expand. Okay. Um, you know, because I do UX design and product design, it's not often that I need Photoshop to, you know, Gen Expand or Gen Fill something. Um, but I do use it a lot for ideation, um, in incorporating things into my mock ups. Sometimes, you know, you'll have, um, you know, just for a placeholder like an Adobe stock image and you need to add something to it. I use Gen Fill for that all the time. Um, I've actually been working really closely with our brand team and they've been playing around with, um, you know, generating uh, some icons or, or ideas for icons that actually go into Adobe tools hmm. um, and Illustrator, which is really fun because uh, it's a little known fact, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of icons across the Adobe ecosystem. And so, you know, that's a continual process that they're going through wow. of, of icon creation. So I love yeah, that I mean, idea. We use it in all different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been blown away by the fact that I don't, for some reason, I have felt like that Firefly pixel generation, I can almost wrap my head around it. Like, all right, I can kind of see how they're doing that. And that is incredible. It's like magic. But as soon as I saw vector, generative, generative AI with vectors, makes my head explode truly like <laughs> that that i've been doing vectors for 35 years 
That should not be possible. There's no way to do that. And yet there it is. They're doing it. And it's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And, you know, I've been working, as I said, I've been working really closely with that team and um, the illustrator do- team is doing some pretty amazing things. But the thing is, it doesn't just stop with the generative stuff. You know, generative is actually like only a, still a very, very tiny piece of any hmm. parts of the Adobe tools. You know, the amounts of features and innovation that's happening across hmm. Adobe I mean, like you, you saw the the latest release with mockups. Still, like one of my all time favorite features, where you like put a logo and you can move it, and it, you know, it detects yeah. the surface behind it somehow. I don't even know how. Like that's what blows my mind. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, I appreciate your point that it's not just Gen AI. That AI is being used in all kinds of analysis. The idea that you can see a static picture and then analyze the three D aspects of yeah. that. Yeah, that's. That's AI. I mean, that's that's really deep learning mind stuff. Blowing. It is mind blowing. <laughs> it really is. It totally, totally is. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I want to just push one other thing that, that an area, <clears throat> actually two areas of AI. And I don't know. This is not really your your field, so I'm not sure if you can answer. But um, there's two areas of AI that Adobe doesn't seem to be touching that I have been waiting for. And one is text. I mean, we're seeing ChatGPT and Gemini and all these other tools out there mm-hmm. basically doing Gen AI or text manipulation. Um, I know Adobe focuses on tools for creatives, but a lot of creatives use words. And it feels like that's an area that Adobe is missing out on somehow. Is that, are we going to see anything around that? Um, I mean, I I am not allowed to comment on anything okay, all right. uh, that's coming down the line, but um, I would say stay tuned. Okay. All right. That sounds cool. And the other area of AI that I personally am hungry for is the kind of AI where the software, the apps start understanding natural language in a way that I can just simply communicate with them. And we're starting to see that with PowerPoint, for example. Uh, there's tools where I can just, just say, do this thing for me. More than generative brush. I mean, that's that's one way to do it. But do something like I'm in Photoshop and I I know I want a curves layer that brings out the highlights. Uh, I, but I don't, maybe I don't know how to do that. So mm-hmm. is there any way that, that Photoshop can start interacting with me, can be that partner in creating these documents or InDesign or Illustrator and, and other tools? Yeah, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? I would say stay tuned. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's okay. I I didn't know, so I have no idea what you're talking about. So I'm I'm not trying to lead, but okay. I'm not trying to make cliffhangers, but uh, yeah, I think just there, there, we have a, we have so many innovations coming. Um, and I think you know, obviously, Adobe Max is just right around the corner. Yes, it is. Um, we always have great announcements there, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great stuff. Uh, that you'll learn about at Max. I am so looking forward to that. I'll be there in in Miami this year. You'll be there. We'll. I am planning to be there. Okay, yeah. it'll, it'll Miami, be good. Miami, here we come. <laughs> Miami, here we come. It's going to be great. Um, I'm going to be doing InDesign training again. I'll be doing another my my awesome. happy InDesign tips and tricks stuff. Um, and but I will will be showing all kinds of AI stuff as well. I'm sure. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to go into this this topic with us a little bit, just to just to surface some of these ideas, because I know so many people in the Creative Pro community have been wondering, so what's going yeah. on? And hearing it or seeing it, like a real face of Adobe is is uh, is important. It's important, not just reading it, reading the blogs or something. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the one thing I, I, if I could, I'd like to leave you with is, you know, as creatives, we have an, more than ever have the opportunity to shape the, the creative future that we mm. want. Mm. Um, and that is why I'm so passionate about what we're doing at Adobe because we really do, you know, I can say like from on behalf of the whole company, like we do have creatives first and foremost because that's who we are, mm-hmm. you know, at the core is we're creators. And so I'm really excited about the opportunity that we have, you know, not just people in Adobe, but the creative community um, who are with us to be able to shape this future that we have in front of us. Um, so that's that. that's what I hope that I can leave uh, your viewers with is just, you know, let's build the future. I love that. Let's build the future. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brooke. It's been great talking Thank to you. Thank you so much. This has been super fun.